This is your Tech News Briefing for Wednesday, July 27th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. If you have an electric vehicle in the U.S. and you charge it at home, you're probably used to that process taking several hours. But if you go to a supercharger, your car's battery could be full in just 30 minutes. The problem is that there aren't many superchargers in the U.S. The company with the biggest network of these ultra-fast chargers is Tesla. But the plugs only work on Tesla cars. That could be changing, though. The federal government and a lot of states are making a big push to expand the charging network for EVs on U.S. roads and highways. And now, regulatory filings have made it clear that Tesla wants some of that public funding, which will mean expanding access to its own chargers. Joining us to discuss this is our energy reporter, Jennifer Hiller. Hi, Jennifer. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So before we talk about Tesla's moves, can you start us off by explaining exactly what the U.S. government is trying to do with EV chargers and why? Sure. In the infrastructure bill that was passed by Congress last fall, there's billions of dollars in funding for public EV chargers. So there's about $7.5 billion that is potentially on the table that can go towards helping build out a public charging infrastructure. And essentially, it is a way for people who have EVs to be able to get power when they are out and about on road trips and driving and don't have maybe their home garage or their condo or apartment building or office building accessible, which might have you know, a place to plug in over a period of hours. So some of the main focus is on fast chargers as a way to build out kind of like the highway network, sort of like how we have gas stations at reliable distances all throughout the U.S. where you know that you can, if you're making a road trip, you can pull over and stop and get fuel. And this kind of fuel would just be electricity instead of gasoline. So we know from regulatory filings that Tesla is bidding for a portion of the federal and state funding that's going to build out the charging network. Do we know how it plans to use that money if it's granted it? We don't have tons of details. We can look in their grant filings and kind of get some hints of what these might look like. The Tesla network is really popular with Tesla drivers. It's sort of can guide them along their road trips when they are traveling and, you know, it just tells them where to go charge next and makes the process really easy. And they have about 14 or 1500 sites across the country and they tend to have several chargers for people to plug into at each site. So they have like nearly 15,000 chargers at this point for Tesla users only. They have sort of their proprietary connector. And so the issue across the country is that as the EV market grows and more people kind of make that switch to EVs, that you're going to need to have a lot more public charging out there. Why would Tesla want to make the switch to being a public charging network when it already has capability to provide charging for its own users? Right. That's a great question. I think there's just so much public money on the table right now that can help Tesla build out its network even more. And so Tesla taking public money to add more charging stations and more chargers doesn't mean that it will just turn the switch and one day all the Tesla locations would be open to drivers of any kind of EV. But it would mean that those locations where they do take public money, um, they would have to allow access to other kinds of drivers. Has Tesla commented on its plans? No, they have been pretty quiet about how the details of this would work, but they have said for more than a year now that they intend to open the network in some way. So what we don't know is exactly what their time frame is and kind of what that would look like. How much of the network are they going to open? What about in terms of cost for users? Do we know how somebody with a different kind of EV might be charged for using a a Tesla charger in the future? Yeah, there's no reason to think that everybody would necessarily pay the same rate. 
Tesla could use discounts for its own drivers and maybe charge other users a higher rate. There is kind of a history of this already within the EV charging industry where you might have loyalty programs or membership programs or things like that. So if you pull up to a certain brand of EV station, if you're a member, you're paying a slightly lower rate per kilowatt hour than somebody who doesn't have that membership or is not a member of that loyalty program. So that kind of different tiered pricing exists already. And there's nothing really to indicate that they would be prohibited from charging people different rates. I want to take a step back to talk about how we got into this situation in the U.S. in the first place, because you know, we don't have a system where if you go to a gas station, for instance, it's a Toyota gas station or a Ford gas station, anybody can use it. So why is the situation with chargers kind of ended up as this piecemeal situation? It is kind of an odd thing, and I think it's just a sign of an early and young industry. Tesla really went out there with its own proprietary network because it had to go create a network. It did not exist anywhere else. So there was no real reason for them to like throw open the gates, so to speak, at that point. So what do analysts and observers think might happen if Tesla does throw open the gates? I mean, do you think it'll change demand for other EVs? You know, that I think is something that remains to be seen. People who keep a close eye on the EV market and the EV charging market just say that the need for public chargers is so immense that the more chargers, the merrier, essentially. They want to see anybody adding these chargers that can possibly add them. And if they are open to all vehicles and if it helps kind of build that public network out, the attitude of EV advocates and analysts is just the infrastructure needs are so great that everybody needs to be building these. But, you know, it's a tricky industry because you're putting the infrastructure in ahead of the market. So if they build it or if we build it, they will come is kind of the the hope they seem to be working on. That Yeah, that is kind of what people are assuming is that if you put this infrastructure in, it will make people feel comfortable enough to buy EVs. And we are seeing a lot of, you know, EV uptake is increasing and, you know, they do seem to be popular. There is a lot of demand for them. All right. That's our reporter, Jennifer Hiller. Thanks so much for joining us, Jennifer. Thank you. And that's it for today's Tech News Briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. And if you like our show, please rate and review it. You can do that wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.